bodies now, lifting us up, Father God, with love. Thank you, Lord. No one else can do it like you. Lord, we thank you, Father God, for lifting us up today. We give you this service today as an opportunity for kingdom work to take place here in this part of your vineyard. Lord, we pray today that those that watch and those that participate here in person, the Father, each one would sense the divine guidance of the Lord in their lives. We ask, O God, today that, Father, you would be well pleased with us as we worship you and as the word of God is broken. We ask, Father, these things in the matchless, the powerful, and the glorious name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And amen. Well, it's a privilege today to have Bonnie here uh, with us. And uh, Bonnie Wallace is no stranger to me. Are you, Bonnie? No. No stranger. And um, we've been kicking around for a long time. And so it's always a blessing when she comes uh, to minister to us. It has a sense of old times and continuity. Sorry, sister, to put the word old and you in the same Praise the Lord. It is so good to be here with you this morning. And just before we start singing, I just want to share a little bit of a testimony. Um, many of you know, but if there's some out there who don't know, um, 10 months ago, the Lord called my husband of 40 years, Jerry, home to be with the Lord. And I have been amazed at how the Lord and many others in my circle of friends and family just expect me to carry on. <laughs> you see, Jerry and I were very close, and uh, we raised a family together, six children, and worked together all those 40 years. Someone said that we were like joined at the hip. And even our, we would say to each other, Sometimes, just realizing what a precious bond we had, that we were sunk. In other words, the one that's left behind is going to be really hard. And I can assure you it has been very hard. However, what you are witnessing this morning is a miracle. Amen. It's a miracle that I am able to stand here and sing. Yeah. It's a miracle made possible by our amazing God. Whose grace and love poured out to me has been more than enough. Mm. I uh, encourage you this morning. So many of you are going through hard things as well these days. I invite you to worship with me and um, worship with me and allow yourself to rest in our Father's love and grace. And I believe beyond a shadow of a doubt that you will be overwhelmed by His love as I have been. He is faithful and strong. So this first song celebrates, celebrates um, the privilege we have to come and, and just celebrates what the Lord has done in our lives. Let us worship together. Come now, fount of every blessing to my heart.
sister, I want you to do a special. Um, uh, just kind of as the Lord uh, puts it on your heart. And Karen, uh, I forgot to turn turn me toward uh, so you can get the pulpit as well because I, I made it close up and my, my fingers won't seem to make it scrunch again. I don't know. It's one of those technical, my technical, how I know. I understand that one though. <laughs> there we go. Thankful for each one, 
If you have an offering to give, there is an offering basket, bucket, uh, ice cream bucket. Uh, we used to use Kentucky Fried Chicken buckets. You remember them? The, the Colonel Sanders. Yeah, Colonel Sanders. We used to. That was, used, that was be a great. Used to be the old thing. We used to have, you know, passing up. Um, uh, anyways, so we have a bucket of some sort out there in the lobby, and if you would like to give uh, to the church, then uh, just mail it in. And if you want to know the address, well, then just ask us. It's Box 506, Sealy's Bay. I'm pretty sure. Anyways, those are the announcements I have. We want to spend some time in prayer. I'm going to uh, ask um, uh, Harry to come up here in just a minute. And uh, we're just going to give the prayer requests. There are some prayer requests uh, um, that uh, we just want to bring before the Lord. Uh, just for people that are home, there's some that are not feeling well this morning. Sister Anne is uh, not feeling well. Uh, she suffers and has suffered for many years from nosebleeds and, and just uh, weakens her and, and want to lift her up. We, uh, Charlie and, and Marguerite uh, that uh, need a touch from the Lord this morning, so we just want to pray for them. Um, there are others that are in our midst. My mind is a little frozen. But uh, just we want to give it to the Lord and just spend some time in prayer, come into agreement uh, for the needs of the body of Christ. And I'm going to ask you, Harry, yes, you can do it where you stand, but we want to see you too. So uh, come on up here. And he speaks above the thing. But uh, come on up and share in prayer. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Precious Jesus. It's pretty. Thank you, Lord. Father, we are grateful and thankful people because of your love for each one of us. And Lord, even as we go through difficult trials with loss of loved ones or sickness or whatever it may be, we know that you are still there, you are still good, you are still great. Yes. And you will encourage us as we lean on you. We thank you for your abiding presence. We thank you for the ability to come together, the freedom we have to come together to worship you and praise your name through songs. And as we listen to your word as it's brought forth by our pastor, we pray that you would minister to each one of us. Many for those who are listening on, on uh, the internet or whatever way they are, we pray that you would open hearts and minds to hear from you today. And Lord, as our pastor has mentioned, those that have been struggling with illness or thickness, we know that you are the God that heals, and you are the God that comforts and strengthens. And we just pray that your indwelling spirit might minister to them as well. Direct and guide, Lord. Thank you for all that you have done. Thank you for what you are going to do. And continue to give us the honor, give you the honor and the glory that you richly deserve. Because Jesus Christ is our Lord. In Christ's name we pray. Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you, my brother. Praise the Lord. Now, normally I like to have an opportunity to give testimonies. It's harder to do it this way, but um, just bring your testimonies to the house of God and somehow we'll find a way. But if there is something burning on your heart, I love to hear testimonies of what God is doing. We hear a lot about the news, what the enemy is up to. And we love to hear what God is doing in your life. So that may not be for today, but... We're glad that, uh, that you're here, and uh, we know that God has done a good thing in your life. Uh, we just like to hear from it. If you have your Bibles this morning, if you would turn to the book of Luke, the book of Luke, and chapter 19 of Luke. And then when you get to chapter 19, find your way down to verse number 11. All right? There's your exercise for the morning. Get to chapter 19 and get down to verse 11. It gives you a time by, uh, by, by video to uh, find your way there. Luke chapter 19 and verse 11. And while they were listening to these things, Jesus went on to tell a parable because he was near Jerusalem and they supposed they supposed. They, they, they presumed something. They, they, they saw something from Christ's uh, teaching and message, and they supposed something. They missed 
understood, even though they saw what Jesus was doing, they had a preconceived idea of what Jesus was is what was Jesus was about, and they supposed that the kingdom of God was going to appear immediately. That's what they supposed. And so he said, in other words, because he knew that this was a presumption that they had had, that this was a misunderstanding about his teaching, because of that misunderstanding, he gave them this parable so it would kind of make it clear. And so he said, a nobleman went to a distant country to receive a kingdom for himself and then returned. And he called ten of his slaves, his servants, and gave them ten mina. Now, mina rice. She may be watching today. <laughs> it's not ten mina rices. <laughs> All right. And she's the only lady I know that has the name mina. But maybe that's where their, her parents got, the, got her name. I don't know. I'll have to find out. But it is a, a sum of money. Some call it a pound in some versions. A, a talent in others. It's a measurement of money. And he called them and he said to give them ten minus. And he said to them, do business with this until I come back. I like the King James. It says, occupy until I come. Occupy until I come. Do business with this until I come back. But his citizens hated him and sent a delegation after him saying, we, we do not want this man to reign over us. And when he returned after receiving the kingdom, he ordered that those slaves to whom he had given the money be called to him so that he might know what business they had done, how well they had occupied. The first appeared saying, Master, your mina, your money has made ten mina more. And he said unto him, Well done, good, good slave, because you have been faithful in a very little thing. You are to be in authority over ten cities. And the second came saying, Your mina master has made five minas. And he said unto him, and You are going to be over five cities. Another came saying, Master, here is your mina, here is your money, here is your investment, which I have kept and put in a handkerchief. And in the other uh, Gospels it talks about being buried in the sand. And some would say, well, why does he say in one place buried in the sand? Why does he say in another place and yeah, put in the handkerchief? Because this was a parable that Jesus said several times. You know, when you're preaching to different crowds, you use the same stories. And he says this, for I was afraid of you because you are an exacting man. You are an exacting man. You are a good, stiff businessman. You take up what you did not lay down, and you reap that which you did not sow. And he said unto him, By your own words, I will judge you. You worthless slave. Did you, 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 did you know that I am an exacting man, taking up which I did not lay down, and reaping what I did not sow? Then why did you not take my money in the bank, putting it in the bank, and have it come? Would have come, when I came, I would have collected it with interest. And he said unto the bystanders, Take the mina away from this guy and give it to one who has ten minas. And they said unto him, Master, he has already ten minas. And he said, I say unto you, To everyone who has, more will be given. But him, the one who does not have even what he has, shall be taken away. But these enemies of mine who did not want me to reign over them, bring them here and slay them in my presence. Wow. And then the triumphal entry into Jerusalem happens. Let's look to the Lord. Father, we're thankful again for thy word. Your word is truth. Your word is light. Your word, O oh God, is what gives us the understanding of your kingdom. Lord, help us not to be like the disciples who misunderstood misread, misinterpreted. Did not understand, but thank you, Lord, that we have the revelation of the Word of God and we have the Holy Spirit freely given to us today that we may understand more about your kingdom. 
Lord, help us to be kingdom people. Help us to be people who are seeking first the kingdom of God. And Father, we pray today for all the churches that are opening up more and more today, 30% and others, uh, Father, across our nation, we just pray that as the church engages people more on one-on-one, -on -one, the Father, that the kingdom work will expand and that you would bless every pulpit and every preacher and every congregation that preaches the word of God. Lord, today we pray that in this place you would be glorified, for we ask it in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And so I go and refer back to this text of Scripture, and I say in this verse where he says, Occupy until I come. Do business until I come. Occupy has had a really bad rap lately. I mean, uh, in uh, the word occupy, when you think of occupy in the news, it's Occupy Wall Street. It is people occupying the streets. It is people and movements mostly the left wing, the anarchists, the, the Black Lives Matter, the, the, the groups of socialists that are occupying government offices and occupying police stations and occupying railway lines and, and taking over. And you hear that so much with that word occupy. And in that context, the word occupy means disruption. It doesn't mean business as usual. It means to stop, to prevent, to hinder what is normal, what is good, what is the God-given calling, what is the, the, uh, what is the gifting, what is the, 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 uh, the administrative authority. It, it's a disruption of things that we're supposed to be. It is a, it's about doing nothing. When you occupy in that way, it means just it's stopping things from getting done. It's stopping the railway from moving. It's stopping the police from doing their job. It's stopping government offices from happening. It's stopping things. It is a disruption. That kind of occupation is the kind of occupation of this world and the kingdom principles of this world. The kingdom principles of this world occupy is a disruption. During this time of COVID-19, it's been a huge disruption. It's been a time of not getting the things done and not doing the, the kingdom work the way that we would want to do it. it it's Satan's plan for the church to occupy space. Not to, to be doing what we're supposed to do, but just to, just to occupy. Just to hold on. Just to, to take up space. To be a disruption. The reason why Jesus gave the story, as I said previously, because they, he wanted to give them a correct view on the kingdom. And they did not have a correct view on the kingdom. The promised Messiah was not ready to set up his earthly kingdom in the sense that he was going to take over the kings and princes of this world. He was going to take the Romans and kick them out. And he was going to have a, a great big hallelujah time. And he was going to rule and reign upon the earth. That day is coming, friends. But he was trying to get his disciples to understand that he was still going to rule and reign. But it was through his church. But he was going to go away. He was going to empower the church. He was going to bless the church. He was going to gift the church with certain abilities. And he was going to go away. And when he came back, and whenever that is, we do not know. But when he comes back, he will hold the church accountable and individuals accountable for what they have done to occupy. The word occupy has a termination date. In other words, it says, occupy till when? And occupy till I come. So there is, a, there is a termination date. There is an end game in this whole thing. Occupy until Jesus Christ comes. That's easy to understand. But what does it mean to occupy? The word in Greek is pragmatikthusia. <laughs> now, even with my poor accent, uh, pragmatikthusia, you must be able to hear the English word pragmatic in there, all right? It means it, the common sense, pragmatic enthusiasm. 
To do stuff. In the context of this passage, it means this. To invest with the intent of increase. Now, any business, that should be the model of the business. To invest with the intent of increase. You don't put your money somewhere with the intent to lose. You invest with the intent to increase. That is the context. That's what it means. I want to say that again. To invest with the intent of increase. That's what it means to occupy. To pragmatizia. And that's what the church is to do. To invest with the intent of increase. There were a couple of servants that occupied well. They invested the money. They, uh, they were, they were uh, uh, good servants. And when he did return, he talked to those good servants who had invested well. And one particular one says, here's your mina, and here is ten, a tenfold increase in that. Here is what I've done with the money. I've, here's the investment that we have made with that. And here it is. And the Lord says, you great, right on. Another one came and he said, here's what I've done. Here's the investment that I've made with this. And the master said, right on. And then there was one servant that did not occupy well. He did not invest with the intent of increase. And he said, he took what, you, Lord, I took what you gave me and I hid it away. Some estimate that what was given one mina, one particular commentary says it was about a hundred days wages. Another commentary said it was three years wages. You know, you go back and forth. It was the, the, the man that had ten talents or ten mina or ten pounds or whatever you want to call it. He said of his, he said, I didn't, I, I, I didn't receive much, but I invested. The one that had only one he must have thought that in comparison to the neighbor. He said, the Lord hasn't given me very much. I'm just going to stick it in my pocket. I'm going to bury it in the sand. I'm, you know, according, you know, I don't have very much, so I don't want to lose what I have. I don't want to risk it, so I'm going to put it in a, in a place that is safe. You see, that, that, that servant compared himself to others. He saw what others had received. What he had received was significant, even if it was only a hundred days. Wages or a year's wage. For him, that was significant. When we're entrusted with something from the Lord, it is significant. If you have a talent, if you have an ability, if you have a family, if you have business, if you have whatever it is that God has entrusted you with, it is significant. Don't look at your neighbor. Don't look at the guy around you. Don't look at the church down the road. Don't compare yourself with others. Don't see how they have done their investment. You have a responsibility to occupy until he comes. To whom much is given, much is required. We understand that principle in the scripture. Is your spiritual life a maintenance? Let's just hang in there and hold on until Jesus comes. Is the church a maintenance ministry? In other words, let's just keep it going. Let's just keep the, put the band-aids on it where it needs a band-aid occasionally. Let's just keep the doors open. Does God want a museum or does he want a ministry? Many of the churches in Europe are beautiful, absolutely gorgeous churches. Many churches uh, of the, in, the, in the continental Europe or Europe or in Great Britain, beautiful churches. Many of the churches of Great Britain actually have become mosques. Many others have become museums. They're a testimony to some other great time. They're a testimony to some great architecture. They're a testimony to many things, but they are not to the glory of God anymore because they are not doing anything. To advance the kingdom, Jesus was taking them and giving them understanding of what it is to be part of the kingdom of God. You know, I don't think that the church in Canada has been occupying well. 
has invested with the intent of increase because we have received so much. We look at our Africa, and I, I, I was uh, preaching to, on, was it Friday, I guess I was preaching to Texas, to South Africa, and to the Congo all at the same time because of different, I don't know, that's anyway, boggles my mind, but, you know, they take what little they have, I tell you what, in those churches, and they make it work. They take every little investment that they have, and people get saved. I say that some churches are occupying better than other churches are. Those that have received so much but are doing so little with it. We have to remember that the Lord is a stiff businessman. How well have you been occupying? How well have we been occupying? How well has the church been occupying? How, how well have we been occupying until COVID is over? We say, well, surely the Lord won't mind if we just take a year off. Just take a year off. Or so, or 13, or 16, or whatever months it is. Just take a year. The Lord won't mind if we just take some time off here. If we just hang on to the investment that God has given us, and we do nothing with it. If we bury it in the sand. Well, there's a clear warning here that when Jesus returns, he will not be the lamb that was led to the slaughter, but he will be the lion of Judah. He is coming to judge. He is coming to judge, first of all, the church of God. So how will we invest with the intent of increase? I want to draw your attention to one text of Scripture, Luke chapter 12, also in Luke's Gospel. Luke chapter 12, and verse 32 says this. This is my theme verse for Lent. In Luke chapter 12, verse 32, before he says this, he says this wonderful little uh, passage of Scripture. He says, Fear not, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. It is the Father's good pleasure. It is his desire to invest in you so that you will invest in others. It is the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom and all the things that the kingdom means. And we'll get into that in just a minute. Basically, the Father says uh, to the Son and to, uh, to the Son to us, the church, He says, I, I have put in your hands certain things. I have invested in you. And I'm coming back to see how you're going to use that investment. I want to share with you four simple things that God has placed in your hands. Number one, kingdom prosperity. Matthew chapter 7, 33, I made reference to earlier. Seek first the kingdom of God and all these things. First the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things will be taken care of. God has blessed us with so much and we have to focus on kingdom principles. In 3 John, he says, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospers. There is a balance in prosperity. I'm not into a prosperity gospel. I am into an understanding that the kingdom of God is, is of great value, and there is blessings that come with being in the kingdom of God. There are health blessings. There's a health benefit plan that comes being part of the kingdom of God. Uh, God has given us uh, uh, jobs. He has given us so much. We, God has blessed us. There is kingdom prosperity. There are things that he has put in our hands that God expects us to invest with the intent of increase. Remember that Jesus gave this illustration one day. It wasn't a, a story. It was actually happened right in front of him. Uh, when he was going to the temple and the boys were with him and, and there was a little old lady and she was going up there. So I don't know how old she was, but she was a widow. You don't have to be old to be a widow, sister. All right. Uh, so there's a little old lady. And I, you know, there was a widow. So she puts in the widow's might. Another financial reference to maybe a half a cent, a half penny, or a half a hay penny, as they say in the British. And then, of course, along comes this rich Pharisee, and he puts in a whole whack of money and, and dumps it in the box, and it makes all kinds of noise. All the coins go in, and he makes a big to do about it. And Jesus points out, he says, which one of these do you think went home 
justified. Which one of these do you think gave a, the right, gave most? And the disciple said, oh, well, well. And of course, the answer was the lady that gave the half cent. She gave everything. Because it says she gave everything she had. The guy that gave to put in the big whack of money, he had a lot more. He wasn't giving everything. He gave a small portion of what he had. But he made more of a deal about it. Now, what is not mentioned in that text of scripture is what I believe. I do not believe that lady went home and died. I don't believe that when a woman went home and had her last little bit and went and died, you know, like back in the Old Testament the story. I believe that she ate that night. I believe that she ate the next day. I believe that God took care of her. I believe that she can, she continued to serve the Lord with all she had. I believe that the Lord uh, ministered to her, blessed her, and provided for her. That I believe that what she had done was giving her all. She felt convicted. She felt the Lord leading her. I do not believe there was some shady evangelist sitting around asking for her to send her some kind of money. Uh, she gave what she felt was what she was supposed to give and she gave her all to the Lord. She made it. She had that half a cent and I don't think we're buying it too much in the marketplace but she decided to take that half cent, all that she had, 100% and to invest it into the kingdom. I believe God took care of that wedding woman. Yes. The second thing is kingdom peace. Now, when I, God gives us, he puts us, he gives us peace. He, he gives us prosperity, he gives us blessing, but he gives us peace. Now, I wasn't very good at Greek in my seminary studies. Uh, you know, I needed to have ways to remember things like pragmatithia. That was a good one because it's got the, the word in it. But the word for peace is hey, reine. And how I could remember that one was he reigns in me. <laughs> That's how I try to remember that peace. When he reigns in me, I have peace. So that's how I helped him. Man, I've got 75. You know, I don't know how I, I, I survived through Hebrew and Greek uh, four years of it. But he reigns in me. The king reigns in me and he gives me peace. A peace that the world cannot give and a peace that the world cannot take away. There are false pieces in this world. Lots of false peace. I had someone uh, yesterday I was talking to that's addicted to uh, some various drugs and uh, they were texting me and saying, you don't understand what it's like to be addicted. You don't understand it. You know, and I, okay. And I said, there's many kinds of addictions. But the peace that comes from God is, is a valuable, valuable thing. I could say so much more, but I won't. Kingdom perfection. God has called us to be holy even as he is holy. And, and gee, it's been, it was said twice, of course, in the New Testament. So, I mean, he's asking us to be perfect in one, in one, one particular place, even as he is perfect. And we say, well, it's not possible. It can't be. And I, I say this. Jesus wouldn't ask us something that he would not also enable us to do. And so God wants us to be holy. He wants us to walk in holiness. He wants to walk in wants us to walk in sanctification. Scripture says it's, it's his desire that we be sanctified, body, soul, and spirit, in the coming of the Lord. Again, the end game is the coming of the Lord. Occupy till I come. Be sanctified, body, soul, and spirit, at the coming of the Lord. There is an end game in these things. He has given us. He has deposited in the church and in our lives righteousness, which comes from Him. The last thing is kingdom power. I say kingdom power last before sanctification and before holiness because too many people like the idea of having power. <laughs> but not holiness. Power is authority. Where does, where does our authority come from? It comes from the king. He's the one that gives us authority. He is deposited. He is placed in our hands. And we say, well, I don't have very much in my hands that God has given. Whatever he has given to you is precious. Whatever authority he has deposited in your hands is glorious. 
the authority that he has given in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ is a wonderful, tremendous blessing. We have the ability to cast out devils. In case you think that's pretty wild, you just have to go to the New Testament. He has given us the opportunity to pray over the sick, and the sick can recover. He has given us some things, and it is not for an elite group of people, although there are people specially gifted. But he has given it to the body of Christ. He has given with a measure of faith the authority of the believer. The devil gets scared when he deals with people that understand that they have authority over him. He has given us that authority. What have we done with it? Have we sat on it? Have we put it in the, in the, in the buried it in the ground? These are things which God has deposited in us. Occupy till I come. Invest with the intent of increase. Fear not, little flock, for it is the Father's pleasure to give us kingdom lessons. But then we have a responsibility when we get blessed to invest with the intent of increase. Father, I pray today for each and every one today as Bonnie comes to the key to the uh, whatever she's got. Father, I just pray today for each one that is watching and listening today that Lord. Help us to see what you have deposited in our hand. Help us to realize, Father, not to look to our neighbor, not to look to somebody else, not to look to another church or another ministry, but, Lord, to say, Lord, what have you given us? And to acknowledge, Father God, that we are tremendously blessed. And, Father, we thank you, Lord, for the blessings, but, Lord, we know that to whom blessings are given, there is something that is required of them as servants of the Lord. And so, Lord, we pray today that you would make us aware and conscious of the fact that we are to invest kingdom blessings with the intent of increase. Help us, Lord, to be good servants. Father, forgive us, Lord. Help us to get that one mina out of the ground or out of the napkin in our pocket. Help us to get it out, Father God, and get it into the open where it can be used. Lord, forgive us where we have sat on talents and we have sat on issues and we have, we have not been a witness to our neighbor, where we have been silent, Lord, and we have, we have not used the opportunities that we could have to, you, to serve you. Father, forgive us, Lord, of these things. Especially as we make this pilgrimage to the cross during Lent. Help us, Lord, to be more spiritually aware of the surroundings around us. And what you desire for us and your church to do. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I'm sure Bobby has a song.
kingdom blessings in your heart. May you go from this place knowing and understanding his precious promises are for you. And may, Lord, you help each one to occupy well until you come. Amen. God bless you today. Uh, Bonnie's going to see me's retirement home.